Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey, and here let's build a third-person shooter controller. So we have our normal third-person controller, and we can move our character in any direction. Then by pressing a button, we can go into aim mode where we can then shoot. So we need to handle the two states, handle the camera and the animations, handle how the bullets work, and put it all together in a nice clean way so we can expand upon it in the future. And for me personally, this demo project was a great new learning experience, I'll talk about it in a bit. This is a pretty long video since it involves quite a lot of individual elements, so if you want to skip ahead to a particular topic or watch the final polished controller, there's timestamps in the video. If you prefer a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses, learn how to make a Builder Defender game using c -sharp, just like I make my own Steam games, or learn how to make games entirely using visual scripting, or learn all about Unity with the Ultimate Overview course, which contains over 30 lectures, each covering a different tool or feature of the engine to help you make better games faster. I'm always available in the courses Q&A section, answering your questions every single day. So check out all the courses with the link in the description. Okay, so let's build a third-person shooter controller. Now, this video is kind of split into two parts. The first part is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you can recreate all the logic, and then in the end, I will take that as a base and polish it into a really nice third-person shooter and talk about my research process for building this. But first of all, let's actually make it. So here is my starting scene. Now I already have a third-person controller. This is the super useful controller made officially by Unity. It's part of the Star Assets, which includes this controller as well as a first-person one. I covered both of them in another video and you can grab them for free from the Unity Asset Store. So what I have here is exactly that third-person controller. So with that, I can already look around, I can move around, I can walk, run, I can jump, and so on. So all of this by default, just by importing that package. Now on top of this, we're going to build our third-person shooter logic. So the first thing that we need is just like I mentioned in that other video, we need to make a second virtual camera set up as a shooting camera. So over here is my scene. And the only change that I did is over here on the player follow camera, I put the shoulder offset on these values, so a bit to the right and a bit upwards. So there you go, so it's like this, and I put the camera side all the way to one. So this is to make it so that it's a bit more like a third-person shooter. So you got the crosshairs down the middle and the character slightly to the side. So let's first duplicate the player follow camera. Let's call this the player aim camera. And over here, just modify some settings. So in order to see the difference, let's just increase the priority. So let's put it at 20. So this is the one that is now active. Okay, so for these settings, first of all, we want to zoom in, so a slightly lower FOV. So let's put it maybe on 30, so a slight zoom in. Then let's also push the camera a bit forward. So over here on the camera distance, push it a bit forward. So maybe something like 2.5, okay. So with this, if I enable and disable, we can now see the difference. So this is the normal camera and this is the zoom in camera. And over here, again, the difference that I made from the default third person is we've got the camera side all the way up to one meaning that you can easily toggle between the left and right shoulder. So you go from zero, it's on the left shoulder, you go to one on the right shoulder. So that's a pretty standard option in any third person shooter. Okay, so with that, that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much the same. So we want third person follow, so everything else is correct. So with this, we now have two virtual cameras. So the first thing we want is just some basic logic to switch between them. So let's begin by making our script. So in new C Sharp script called the third person shooter controller. And here on the player armature, let's just drag this script. Okay. Now here, let's first begin by adding a reference to our aim virtual camera. And for that, let's make it of type sin machine virtual camera, just in case we want to change something on the camera itself later on. So we need using sin machine, and then we're going to make a sin machine virtual camera for the aim virtual camera. Make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. So back in here, just drag the reference, all right. Now here, since we already set the aim to have a higher priority, all we really need to do is just enable or disable this game object. So to do that, let's make a private void update. And now here we need to test for input. And for that, the star assets package is using the new input system. So for the aim, let's use that one as well. If you don't know how to work with new input system package, go watch my video on it. It's a very capable system that makes input handling super simple and it's what you definitely should be using in your final projects. So it's the start action, so let's just open this one. And here it is, all the actions involved in this third person controller. So let's add another one. Let's call this aim. And now normally for the type itself, I would use it as button. But here I'm trying to stick as close to the standard set by the start assets. So let's set it up exactly the same way as the sprint here. So both these are meant to be hold actions. So let's set it up exactly the same way. This one is set using pass through. So over here, let's do the same thing, pass through. Okay, and then for the bindings, let's add one, let's listen, listen to the right mouse button. 
and let's also add another one and this one is going to be for a gamepad and for aiming let's go to a left trigger there it is then just make sure to assign this one to the gamepad control scheme and this one is on the keyboard mouse control scheme okay our action is defined let's just hit on save ascent now we need to listen to when that action happens so on the start asset itself we can see that it's using the player input method and for the behavior itself it's using send messages now, personally, when using this class, I would prefer to use Unity events, but again, I don't want to change this. I want to stick with the standard made by the start asset, so let's use the same method. And if we stick with the same pattern, then we listen to that event over here in this start assets input. So for the behavior, we want it really to be exactly like the sprint. So we can exactly just copy all that logic. So instead of a sprint, let's make an aim. And then down here, we've got the on events. And so let's copy. Let's make this on aim. Then we're going to make an aim input function. Then down here, let's copy the spring input and just make it the aim input. Okay, so there it is. We made it work exactly like the previous one. And now in our third person shooter controller, first we need a reference to the start inputs. So a private start assets inputs. So this one is inside a namespace. All right, we have the inputs. And then on our update, we're simply going to test, go into that one and test for the aim bully. So if this one is true, we want to enable the aim virtual camera. So let's go into this one, dot game object, and we're going to call set active. And if it's true, we're going to set it to true. And if not, we're going to set it back into false. Okay, so just with this, it should already be working. So let's test. Okay, here I am and everything looks normal. Now I right click and there you go. It zooms in and now I let go and yep, it zooms out. Okay, now it's obviously way too slow. So let's fix that. Let's go into the Sin Machine Brain. So on the main camera, we've got the Sin Machine Brain. And over here, we've got the default transitions. So it's taking two seconds. Let's make it quite a bit snappier. So maybe 0.1. Let's see. So here it is, and I hold. Yep, there you go. Now it's nice and snappy. Okay, great. So the next thing that we need is aim sensitivity. Right now, the sensitivity is the same in both modes, which works all right over here in normal mode. But if I zoom in, then it's way too intense. It's very difficult to aim correctly. So let's set up the logic to have two different sensitivities. Now, in the video where I made an overview of the start assets, in there I already covered how you can add sensitivity to the third person controller, which doesn't have that field by default. So let's modify the third person controller script. Over here, let's just add another one. So let's make a public float, call it sensitivity, and default it to 1f. And then down here, we just find the camera rotation function. And on this one, we're applying the input. So we just multiply by the sensitivity. And just with that, it's already working. Now we just need to build upon this, and we're going to make a function to expose the sensitivity. So let's go down here, make a public void. Let's call it set sensitivity. Okay, so we got a function to change it. And now let's go into the shooter controller. And over here, let's add fields for both of them. So make it a serialized field, make it private. It's going to be a float for the normal sensitivity. Another one for the aim sensitivity. And then we set them the same way that we set the zoom. So we need to get a component of that one. All right, so we get the component from the same object, and then we simply go into that script we call set sensitivity, and on this one we set it to the aim, and on this one it's normal. All right, so let's set these films in the editor. So let's say for normal, keep it at one, and for aim, let's put it at half, okay? So here I am with this sensitivity, and as I zoom in, yep, now it's much smaller, allowing me to be quite a bit more accurate. All right, great. Now the one thing missing here is a simple crosshair, so we know where we're actually aiming, so let's add one. Now, this is very simple. We just need, first of all, a canvas. So let's go into UI, make a new canvas. Then for the canvas, set it up like I normally do. So leave it on screen space overlay. Over here, scale with screen size. Go with 1280 by 720 and match with the height. So that's just the standard that I like to follow. And now inside, let's make an image. So a new UI image. Just call it the crosshair. And over here, I've got a simple sprite of a crosshair. So it's just something very basic that I drew in 30 seconds. So just sign the image and let's make it quite a bit smaller. So maybe 50, maybe 30, something like that. 
And that's pretty much it. Nothing else we need to change. Just make sure it's pivoted on the center and it's on zero, zero. And yep, there it is. Now we have our character controller and we can see exactly where we're aiming. All right, great. So with that done, now it's time to handle the shooting. Now for this, there's actually two ways you can do it. One approach is you can make the weapon shoot actual projectiles, or you can make it a hit scan weapon. So for that one, there's really no right or wrong answer. It really depends on the type of game that you're going for. Now, I actually made a video quite a while ago on the various ways to handle projectiles. In that video, I covered the methods in 2D, but the logic we're going to use here is quite similar. So do go watch that video after this one to see how it works in 2D. Now, the most complex thing to do has to do with where you want the bomb to go. Now, the reason is because this is a third person shooter. So that means the camera is slightly off to the side and not right on top of the player. So that means that if you have the player itself just shoot forward, it's going to shoot forward and not actually shoot where the crosshair is. So even if you go with the projectile approach, it still helps to do a quick raycast just to see exactly where the projectile should go. Okay, so let's do that. Now here in our script, the way we're going to do that is with an actual raycast. Now a while ago, I covered how to get the mouse worm position in 3D and 2D. Now that method is making a raycast on the mouse position and seeing where it lands. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So let's actually copy the code from that video. It's on the mouse 3D class that I've got on this project. So here it is, that's the code that we made in that video. And here we've got the update, making a ray, and yep. Okay, so like this, it would work. However, here we're using the old legacy input manager. So we could change this to use the new input system. We could do it using unity engine.input system. And then over here we could do, for example, mouse.current, grab the position and read the value. Now we could do this. However, with this, the game would break if there was no mouse connected. So it would break, for example, if you were playing on a console. Now, since we want this to work with a mouse, but also just a gamepad, let's go with another approach. All we really need is the position on the center of the screen, since it never actually changes. So for that, we can do some very basic math to get that point. So yep, it's that simple. We just make a screen center point, we grab the screen width divided by 2, the height divided by 2. Alright, so here we have right the center, and then we do a screen point array, so the same thing as usual. Then we've got the collider mask, so first of all let's rename this to the aim collider mask, and let's define it up here. So as usual, serialize field, make it of type layer mask. I cover layers and bit masks in another video if you're curious to how it actually works. So this is an aim collider mask. Okay, so our logic should be working, except over here we do not want to modify the transform position, but let's verify that it is correct, so let's make a debug transform. So up here, add another field, just a private transform, call it just the debug transform, then down here we set that one on the position. Just make sure that this point is actually correct. Okay, so back in the editor, here we've got our script. First of all, we need the aim collider and layer mask. Now over here, all the walls, all the environment, all this is on the default layer. So let's collide with default layer, okay. Then for debug transform, let's create just a 3D sphere. Put it pretty small and just add a nice material just for fun. Okay, so this sphere is going to be our debug transform. So just over here, let's move it, okay. So let's test and we should be able to see the sphere exactly always on the crosshair position. Let's see. And yep, it works, so wherever I look, I can see the sphere is exactly on there. So with this, we now know the worm position of where we're actually aiming. All right, so far so good. However, here we actually have the same issue that we saw with the house building system in the third person video. And the other issue is the sphere is approaching, so that has to do with the collider. So just over here, let's just remove the collider. And okay, it no longer has that issue. Now, as I was saying, we do have the same issue that we had with the house building system in third person. So in that video, if you remember, there was an issue when we looked at the sky, because the sky does not have a collider. So that's the exact same thing here. If I'm looking at the ground, floor, and so on, everything works. There's a sphere, okay. But if I look towards there's no collider, so if I look up at the sky, and nope, the whole thing breaks. So there's no sphere anywhere, because over there, there's no collider. So the simple solution is just like it did on the house building system, which is to make sure there's always a collider. Let's add some basic invisible walls all around the world, so there's always something to collide with. That's very basic, let's just create a new cube. Let's just move it to the side. Oh, 
Alright, so I've had colliders all around, but obviously the player is not meant to be outside in here. So very simple, let's just remove the mesh render. So there you go, now we've got the colliders, but they have no visual. And now if we test and we aim around, yep, everything works perfect. Alright, great, so far so good. Now one more small thing here. Usually in third person shooters, the character rotates as you aim. So as you look around, right now the character is still facing forward, but it should be aiming towards where I'm pointing. So let's add that. Over here we're testing for the aim, changing the sensitivity and so on. So in here let's just calculate the vector from the player to the target position. Okay, so here, first of all, I add the mouse compilation up on the top so we can use it down here. So just to find a vector 3 for the mouse run position, then we do the rate cast, the usual thing. We position the debug transform, even though we can remove this later. And then we just have the mouse run position, all right. So then we just grab that one. And first of all, we make it the Y match the exact same one as the transform position Y, because right now we just want about left to right rotation. We don't care about up down. So with that, then we have the aim direction towards the world aim target. So with this, now we can rotate the player and we can do with that with transform.forward. So this is the player's forward vector, which you can read, but you can also write in order to rotate. So if you're like me and we prefer dealing with vector threes instead of quaternions, then this is a great way to rotate things. And to make it smooth, let's do it using a vector 3lerp All right, so like this, we should be able to see the player rotate to face the world aim target and it should rotate nice and smooth. Okay, let's test. So here I am, the character is looking forward and I can look around and see the character, all right. But if I zoom in, now I'm aiming and yep, there you go, now the character does aim towards where I'm actually aiming. And the aim itself is also nice and smooth. So instead of being instant, there's a nice smoothness to it. All right, great. So everything seems to be working. However, we actually do have an issue if we start to move. So if we're moving like this, yep, so normal, I can move and look around. But now if I move and aim at the same time, and yep, now look at that, now the character is not looking there, now the whole thing is messed up. So the issue here is that the base character controller is trying to rotate based on the move direction, but then we're also trying to rotate as we're actually on the aim mode. So we need to make sure to do just one or the other. For that, let's make a function to disable the rotation on the base script. So over here on the third person controller, let's add a simple boolean, so private bool. Let's call this rotate on move and let's default it to true. And then we can go down here into the actual move function. So it's over here that we're moving the things and so on. All right. And we're handling the target rotation. So over here, this is how it's facing the input direction. So we're only going to run this if that Boolean is set to true. Okay. So now we just need to expose this Boolean. So down here, do the same thing. Okay, so we've got this function exposed. And now on the character controller, now we can do that. So in here, we go into that one. So while aiming, we set it to false, so that one does not rotate. And when we stop aiming, we set it back to true. Okay, let's see. All right, so here I am, I can walk around, the character rotates as it should, all right. And now if I zoom, and yep, there you go, now the character no longer rotates, so now it actually always faces the nice same direction. All right, great. So let's continue. Now the sphere is always on top of the crosshair, which means that we know the world position of where we're actually aiming. So with this, like I said, you have two options. One is to make the bullet an actual projectile. So you spawn the bullet on top of the weapon position and you rotate it to face the crosshair world position and then just move it forward and test for physics collisions as it moves. That's one approach. And the other approach, the head scan weapon, is to do the raycast and then we check the object that we hit, we test if we hit something we can damage and we just deal damage directly. So let's quickly try out both methods. So over here I've got a bullet prefab that I prepared previously. So there's a parent game object with a rigid body and a collider set to trigger. Then over here on interpolate set to interpolate so it actually moves smoothly and collision detection is set as dynamic since this one will be moving quite fast. Then inside we really just have a visual, nothing else. Okay, so let's make a script to handle the bullet projectile. So let's make a new C sharp script for the bullet projectile. And over here, first thing is let's get that rigid body. So private rigid body. Oh, 
Okay, so on awake we get it, and then let's make it on start. On start, we're going to set the bullet rigid body. We're going to modify the velocity, and it's going to be based on this transform dot forward vector. So we do that, and then maybe a certain speed. All right, so just like this, it will move forward as soon as it spawns. Now testing for collisions. Since we made the collider trigger, we test for on trigger enter. And then over here, let's just destroy this game object. Okay, now we need to define a shoot input. So on the input actions, let's define another action, call it shoot. And for this one, this is meant to work like a button. So let's copy exactly the same way as the jump action. So make it a button. Then for the bindings, let's add one, first of all, for the left button on the mouse. Okay, and add another binding. And this one will be for the controller. So let's go with gamepad. In this case, for shooting, let's go with the right trigger. Okay, then set this one as a gamepad. This one as a keyboard and mouse. All right, so we have our action. Let's hit on save. And now to listen to the action, we need to add over here to the star assets input. So again, let's copy the exact same pattern as over here on the jump. So this will be the shoot. So let's copy the on jump. So we've got the on shoot, then the shoot input. So again, let's copy. All right, so we've got our shoot boolean that we can test. So back in the shooter script over here on our update, let's test for that one. So if we're going to go into the star assets input, test for shoot. If it is true, then we want to shoot our bullet. So in order to spawn the prefab, let's add another one up here. So for the bullet projectile prefab. So we're going to have that reference and then down here we're going to call instantiate. So now we need to know where we're going to instantiate it. So in order to define that position in the editor, let's add another transform as well. Let's call the spawn bullet position. So let's add both of these in the editor. Just comment out this line so it can compile. Now here on the player script, let's first add the prefab. So we'll drag that one, okay. And then let's make a game object. So let's make it inside the player armature. So just an empty game object. So this is the position where we're actually going to fire our bullet from. So for now, let's put it roughly there, roughly around chest height, okay? The only thing is just make sure that it's not actually inside the player collider. So make sure that it's a bit off so the bullet doesn't spawn this right immediately. So let's call this the spawn bullet position. And on the script, attach that one, okay? So then here we can now use that. We are going to instantiate the prefab, instantiate on the spawn bullet position. And then we need the rotation. So for this one, again, we're going to make it face towards the mouse worm position. So let's get it here. Okay, so we call it the M direction. We grab the mouse worm position. And we call it direction based on the spawn bolt position. All right, so we've got that direction. Then we need to convert it into a quaternion. So we use local rotation and convert it. Okay. And then since this is meant to be a pistol, we're going to set the shoot to fall so it doesn't shoot constantly. So as you click, it shoots. Okay, let's test. And we should be able to instantiate the prefab and it should move forward and it should be destroyed when it hits a wall. Let's see. All right, here we are. And as I aim and I shoot, and if there you go, it does indeed spawn the prefab and it goes in there and then it vanishes. So if I shoot into the ground, yep, there you go. So yep, it is spawning correctly and it is going exactly towards where I aim. So again, remember the problem that we're trying to avoid, which is to make sure that the player doesn't shoot just forward, but rather it actually hits where it's actually aiming. And yep, it is working. So aim at the corner and yep, it hits the corner. All right, so far so good. Now let's identify the collisions. Over here, I've got a simple visual for a target. This is from the Polygon Battle Royale Asset Pack. There's a link if you want to get it. So we're going to identify it using a tag component. So for that, let's go down here and just create a new C-sharp script. Let's call it the bullet target. And then let's leave it as a completely empty component. So don't change anything. This one is only used for identifying a target. So on the target game object, I'm just going to add this script. So just add the bullet target onto it. Okay, that's it. Now back into the bullet script, when we've got the on trigger enter, let's test if we hit a target or not. Okay, so that's it. We just test for a get component. If it is not null, then we hit a target. If not, we hit something else. Now let's just add some particles just to identify it.
Okay, so just adding two references, some particle effects. So one green, one red. If we hit the target, we get green. If we hit something else, we get red. Then here I've got some particles that I prepared previously. So just go into the bullet projectile on the prefab and just sign the references and that's it. Okay, let's test. All right, so here I am and as I zoom and I shoot and there goes the bullet and yep, it hits the floor. So we've got the red particles. Okay, so far so good. Now if I aim towards the actual target, aim and shoot and yep, there you go. Now I've got that one. All right, so we are correctly identifying what target we're actually hitting. So we can hit the wall or we can hit a target. Let's just speed up those bullets. So hide the visual for the debug since we can verify that one is correct. And on the bullet, make it move a bit faster. So maybe 40. So we're here as I am and I shoot and yep, there you go. Now I've got hit the target, hit everything else and so on. And yep, everything works great. All right, awesome. So we have the projectile, it goes towards the crosshair, it hits something and it identifies what object it hit. So that's the projectile method. Now let's see the hit scan method. So for the hit scan method, it's actually much simpler, which is down here when we do the ray cast. Okay, we're grabbing the point, which is the actual hit position, all right. But then over here, we also have the actual object. So over here, we can simply test if it is a valid target or not. So we can just define a transform for the hit transform and default it to null. And then over here we set it equals the raycast hit dot transform. Okay, so we know the transform that we hit. Then down here when we shoot, instead of having to instantiate something, we don't do this. For the hit scan weapon, we just test if we hit something. So if it is not null, then over here we can add the same logic that we had on bot. So just this. So if it is not null, that means that we hit something. And if so, then we identify just like previously. And that's pretty much it. So here I am, and as I am, and I shoot. And yep, there you go, it shoots instantly. So I'm shooting here, and I've got the red particles. Shoot that one, and yep, got the nice and green. All right, so this is the raycast method. As you can see, there is no projectile. As soon as you click, the bullet is instantly fired, and it instantly reaches the target. So as you can see, you've got both methods. Both of them are valid. Now there is one difference about both of them. So here I'm using the bullet projectile method. And if I go towards a corner and I aim it just out there, you would assume that I would hit that wall back there. But if I aim and I shoot, and yep, I'm hitting the wall near me. So not the one far away. So I'm not actually hitting where I'm trying to hit. So the issue is that of course the projectile is not being spawned right from the center of the screen. So slightly offset. Whereas over here when using the hit scan method with this one, even if I'm right on the corner, yep, it still hits the actual target. Now again, this is really a design question. Some people see this as a feature, others see it as a bug. So really, it's up to you to decide what method works best for your game. One more design question that you need to ask yourself is if you want to enable hip fire or not. So do you want to enable shooting like this and also while zoomed in or only while zoomed in? Again, this is a design question and it really depends on what game you're going for and what you're trying to build. Okay, so with all this, we have the whole logic working. We can move the character around in third person. We can engage aim mode and we can shoot some bullets either as projectiles or as hit scan weapons. Now, one final thing we need is just a basic animation. So we're not actually shooting from the idle position. So for that over here, the player is using an animator. So here it is. So this is the animator that it comes with. So I don't want run. It's got the jump, the in air and so on. Now, the way we can handle aim is by using the super useful animator layers. So you go up here, you create a new layer. Let's call it aiming and creates a new layer. And then down here, I've got a pistol idle animation. So I just grabbed this one from Mixamo, which is a free website with a bunch of free animations. So I'm just going to set this animation and that's it. Now, if you don't know about animated layers, they are super useful. Here we have the layers. And if we click on the gear icon, we can see it has a weight. So by setting this on zero, it's playing just the base layer. So it's currently on idle. And as I move up, Yep, there you go, now it starts playing the pistol idle animation. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to dynamically swap between the normal walking and the aim animations. We're going to dynamically do that as the player starts to aim. Now I cover animated layers and tons of other things related to animation in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. So go ahead and get it if you want to learn more about animations and many other Unity tools and features. Okay, so here in the third person shooter controller, we just need a reference to the animator. Okay, and then down here when we're aiming, we're going to modify something. So let's go into the animator. We're going to call set layer weight. 
Now this one takes a layer index. We added it as the second layer, so it's on index one. And then the float for the weight. So we could set this just on one F. And when we stop aiming, we set it back into zero F. So we could do that and it would be instant. But again, like we did previously on the rotation, let's use Lerp to make it nice and smooth. Okay, so we're just using method.lerp in order to lerp the layer weight from whatever it is up to one and then over here down to zero. Okay, let's test. All right, so here I am, it's looking normal with normal aim animation. And as I right click, yep, there you go, we go into the aim animation. So normal, aim, and so on. All right, so it looks pretty great. All right, so the character is working great. We've got our normal character. We can look around, we can move around, sprint, jump, and so on. Everything works. Then we can go into aim mode and point anywhere, and then we can shoot some bullets. Then those bullets are projectiles and they identify exactly where they hit. So I can walk around, go here, aim and shoot, and there you go, everything works great. All right, awesome. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help, thanks. Now over here is the final polished character that I made while researching this video. So I've got the same third person controller. I can move around, I can run, I can sprint, I can stop. Then as you can see, I'm using a custom character along with a really nice weapon. And I'm playing around on this scene, which is from the Polygon Battle Royale pack. There's a link in the description if you want to get it. And the animations are also from another pack that I picked up a while ago. I can aim, which causes the character to lift up the weapon and zoom in the camera, so just like we did. And of course, I can then shoot. So as you can see, lots of tiny effects, lots of polish to make the shooting feel really great. So I can walk around, I can run, sprint, and aim, and start shooting at everything. Just like that. So, like I said in the beginning of this video, one interesting thing was the research that I did in making this project. Now, most of my Unity expertise lies in making 2D games. Essentially, all of my Steam games are in 2D. Dealing with 3D characters and especially 3D animations is definitely not something that I'm used to. So, this specific demo has been a great learning experience for me. I'm saying that just to once again remind you that your whole life is a never-ending learning journey. For me, I've been making games for 20 years and working with Unity for almost 10, and yet this is the first time that I really dug into 3D animation. So whenever you come across something that you know absolutely nothing about, don't be discouraged. It's unlikely you will ever get to a point where you know everything, so the goal is to always be learning new things and using that knowledge to make better games. So to make all of the logic here is pretty much exactly what I covered in the rest of the video. So it uses two virtual cameras and so on. Then for the animations themselves, as you can see, they also look pretty good. So I made it pretty much exactly like the demo and just expand upon it. So there's the animator. I've got the base layer with idle walk run animations. Then on the second layer, this one is only being affected to the upper body. This one handles the aim and shoot animations. This one only gets up to half weight. So if I go into the game and I zoom in, you can see, yep, that one goes up to one and that one only up to 0.5. So this one is just because the walking animation had a lot of up and down motion. So when I zoom in in order to stabilize it a bit, I put that one at 0.5. So just stabilize the weapon quite a bit more. Then on top of that, the other thing that I had to learn was how to work with the animation rigging package. So it's super useful. I'm definitely going to do a dedicated video on that sometime soon. Note how because of that, the player is aiming perfectly wherever I aim the mouse. So the weapon perfectly matches exactly where I'm aiming. So if I aim right in there, it's aiming there. If I go in there, it's pointing in there. So this perfect aim, perfect rotation, perfect aiming, that is handled by the animation rigging package. So the base animation on the animator, that one is just static, it's just pointing forwards. And then the animation rigging package, that's the one that is making it so that it points exactly where the mouse is pointing. Then the next thing that I added was a muzzle flash effect and a light. So those are just some very basic effects. Essentially they get enabled for literally one frame and then disabled. So just click, enable, disable, just like that. Very simple and looks pretty great. And then for the projectile itself, a while ago I mentioned that you have two options. You can go the raycast or the projectile route. However, in reality, there's a third type. You can make a hybrid between both of those, which is exactly what I'm using here. So first I'm doing the raycast to get the mouse position. And then I've got this simple script, which runs on the bot. This one has a setup function where it receives the target position. And then it simply moves this transform towards that target position. So there's no physics on this object, it just moves the transform towards the target position and when it gets there, then it destroys itself. I went with this approach because I wanted the bullet to move really fast and the physics system gets a bit weird if you try to make some really fast projectiles. So like this, it looks really good and it works perfectly. And then as you can see, I also added a trail for the visual. So over here you can see the bullet is in there, this is all the trail. And for the trail, it's just a very basic trail render. 
And finally, just for fun, I added these boxes, these props. They've all got rigid bodies, so they fall out with gravity. And then I also added some simple shooting logic. So I get whatever collider I hit, I try to get the component rigid body, and if it does have a rigid body, then simply add explosion force. So with that, I can aim, and if I shoot towards something with a rigid body, there you go, boom, and I can shoot everything. As you can see, very simple and makes the scene feel much more alive with much more physics objects. Alright, so with all of that, here is a really nice, really capable third-person shooter controller. You can download the project files and use this as a base on your own projects. And now that I have this really nice third-person shooter controller, I will definitely be using it in many more videos, so make sure you hit the bell icon to stay tuned for that. Again, if you are looking for a more guided path with step-by-step -step lectures, then check out my complete courses. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.